10 years of being in the public eye. 13 albums and a wealth of words should tell you something about the workings of an artist. But do they, when the artist is David Bowie? We won't pretend that this program cracks any codes, opens any secret doors, but it does throw a new light on his appreciation of other performers. There are some famous names here, some you've never heard of before, but they all acquire a kind of fame in the Bowie record collection. David Bowie, it's, um, it's a bit grey out today, but I've got some Perrier water and I've got a bunch of records. Um, I think if I was walking outside at the moment, I would like to be walking on this street. It's Love Street by the Doors. <laughs> seeing him once at, um, I think it was the Roundhouse, when they came to London the first time. I believe I'm right. Somebody else that uh, I think is working at the Roundhouse over the next few weeks, uh, a buddy of mine, Iggy Pop. This is just something that um, I remember with affection because it's when I was with uh, him on tour playing piano for him. This one's called TVI. <laughs>
TV. We all got TVs. And when I look at my TV, these are the words I say. So on piano is um, a gentleman. I think this is the first really despondent track. Um, he left his band and he was uh, doing his first solo album, and I found it uh, rivetingly depressing. Um, and really enjoyed playing it to myself. It's called "Remember" by John Lennon. Very good piano. I think it's Billy Preston actually. <laughs>
let's play Love Street again. <laughs> no. <laughs> um, growing up and being angry. That's what this one was all about. Um, 96 Tears by Question Mark and the Mysterians, which nobody has in their record collection. <laughs> yes, they've actually got it here. Good old Beeb. <laughs> Extraordinary piece of music. Um, there was another incredible. What are they called? The Thirteenth Floor Elevators. I, I can't. I can't remember that one very well. It was around the same period, I think. I guess some punk freak will sort of correct me on that. Um, this is a punk that uh, I was. Um, I, I sort of grew. I was incredibly impressed by this one when I first heard it. It was a real use of music in describing a situation musically um, and it's also nice and short but it's classical music it's very good um, it's it describes well, you see what you think it describes it's by Elga <laughs> Thank you. 
was in fact a, a wagon. I expect you guessed, didn't you? <laughs> it was from the nursery suite. Oh, and here's another nursery song. Um, this one's interesting because uh, the I thought it was um, an extraordinary thing to use numbers as as backing vocals, and that um, I really like that idea. And I've just heard it again. But here's the first one that I heard. It was Inchworm by Danny Kay. OK, so that's one use of numbers. And now if you want to get very modern, there's a chappy called Philip Glass. Um, listen how he uses numbers. I think probably his music could point to a particular direction that music may be... or well, some aspect of music may be going in at the moment. This is from a, an opera that he wrote, which was about uh, 15 and a half years long. And they sort of put some selections out on this album called Einstein on the Beach. Um, and this particular piece is called Trial Prison. And there's a lovely little narration in it by um, uh, one of the singers. It'll be on the left-hand side of your speaker if you've got stereo. On the right-hand side if you've got them plugged in the wrong way round. 